Hey guys, Blackwatch here. We had a Q&A on Instagram just yesterday and yeah, it filled up pretty quickly with questions. We're gonna go through some of those questions today. Some are trading related, some are personal related, some are about business. Some of them are just, I guess memes, I don't really know. <laughs> some weird questions in there. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get cracking on it. I think what we're gonna start with is we'll start with the trading questions first because I think that's what people are kind of into uh, the most. So we'll just we'll just go ahead and start with that. Um, let's turn on the light. What's up? What's up? All right, let's get into the trading ones here. Jet FX official. Do you use the five seconds in your entry model? Uh, no, I personally don't. Um, a lot of people do. They use it for extra confirmation on lower time frame uh, entries, like one minute entries. They'll go to the five second look for confirmation. Uh, personally, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I do think that it has a lot to do with what capital you're trading. If you're trading larger capital, you don't really need those super tight stop losses. If you're using it just for confirmation, just to like make sure that you're on the right side of the market, that your lower time frame POI, like your one minute is actually getting a reaction that you want, that's totally fine. Um, but if you're just doing it to get like super tight stop losses, I don't necessarily think that's the best idea. Um, or not the best idea. It's okay. As you trade whatever the hell you want, as long as you're profitable, it's totally fine. Um, personally, I don't. I don't think I. I need it. So no. Uh, another question by Wolf Wolfish or Wolfish. I'm not sure. Dot F. How much risk do you take per trade? Uh, it ranges between half percent and full percent, one percent. Um, sometimes, if I have enough profits to play with, I'll risk two or three percent. Um, but generally speaking, the average is between half percent and one percent. A good rule of thumb is if you are not so confident about your entry, maybe it's a risk entry and you haven't quite gotten confirmation yet, uh, you can put lower risk on that risk entry and then put the full risk or complete the risk if you want like half on the risk entry, another half on the confirmation, then you can scale in and build your position size. Uh, another question by Enzorpe or Enzorp. How many hours do you spend on trading? Uh, typically two, three active hours. So I only trade New York, which I think might tackle some other questions, but I only trade New York. I don't trade London. I don't trade Frankfurt Open or Asia. Well, sometimes I trade Asia. I'm in the US. Um, so I operate on us time, obviously. So the better option for me is New York trading by the time the kids are out of school and that kind of stuff. New York open has typically already happened. Um, and I tend to find continuations throughout the day. Um, but generally speaking, my trading times, I'm in Texas, so I'm central time. I trade from about 8 AM, which is nine Eastern to about 11 AM Eastern or yeah, around there. So that's tip, that's when London overlap ends. What are your trading hours? How many trades do you take per month? Well, I already answered the trading hours part. Um, how many positions do I take? This is from, <laughs> this is from Walter Ubis. Probably butchered your name, but very active member in, community, in the community. So good to see you, man. Um, I probably take somewhere between three and five a week depending on what's happening. So like if I have higher time frame playing out and I have the potential to catch a swing trade, I will take more chances trying to get into it. I might take a few losses or I might take a few break evens, but I will typically put more risk on the table to make sure I get into these trades that are gonna run, right? That's the typical idea, but uh, three to five a week, right? So about 20, I guess a month, maybe. That's That sounds heavy, maybe, maybe. Sometimes it's much less than that. This one's by Darkstarter21. What did you do while waiting? Uh, what do you do while waiting for your trading rules to be fulfilled? Um, the way I do it is I just set alerts. So trading view, obviously you can set alerts at certain POIs. I will just wait for either four hour POIs or 15 minute POIs to give me my alerts. And then from there, I will then be more active on the screens. So um, while I'm waiting for those, for those alerts, I'm usually working on my other projects. One thing I would recommend is just when you are waiting for certain things to play out to just don't, don't stare at your screen, set your alerts. You either get them or you don't, but if you tend to sit there and watch your screens, you often find yourself in situations where you're just taking trades that don't necessarily exist. You're just kind of forcing them, so. Okay, this one is from 
I Justin Justin Valenu Valenu sorry. Uh, what risk do you recommend on trading prop ferns? Uh, my forex fund or FTMO? Do you think one percent is okay? Well, it depends, right? It depends on your confidence level. Typically, one percent is for who I would consider a confident trader. Uh, if you tend to have a lower strike rate, you probably want to reduce your risk per trade to give you a little bit better of a fighting chance. Um, you have to remember that your max drawdown on these challenges are typically, that's your account size. You're just trading a leverage account and they are typically built to take money from you. So just keep that in mind. If, if you're not like an overly confident trader, you don't have like a very good strike rate, then you might want to reduce your risk. Uh, this one is from Sam Buzz. Sam Buzz. Do you think there will always be people wanting to get into currency trading? Yeah, definitely. This one is from HXB London, LDN. Uh, what was your first purchase using trading money? Uh, it was more crypto. More crypto. Uh, this one is from Ab Abin One Z or uh, Abins Abinese. I, don't know. I want to build a fifty dollar account. Is it possible? Yes. This one is from, no, I have a question from Crazy, Crazy Yachas, Crazy Yakas. Uh, how did you manage quitting your job to become a full-time trader? Well, that's a funny story. Um, I was doing IT work and I ended up leaving that job of my own free will to sell back my services because there was, I wanted to move to a different state and I didn't really have teleworking options. So I quit and then I sold back my services because they they, pre, they needed me to fulfill a role. And um, I was able to provide that service while working as an independent contractor. Um, and then COVID hit and they dropped me. So I was kind of forced into full-time trading, to be honest. Um, all right, this one is from Imra Masuliam. Sorry, I can't say any of these names apparently. Uh, how do you recover from drawdowns or even simultaneous losses? Um, brass tax, man, you just keep trading. You, you honestly just keep trading. If you find yourself in a situation where you're just taking like an unreasonable amount of losses, where it's more so along the lines of that you don't really have an edge or you're not following your rules, then you probably need to go back to the drawing board. But if you're if you have the data behind you and you know what you're looking for and it's just the probability of the market, you just keep trading. Uh, this one is from James Morfitt. Where's your journal from? Uh, if you're talking about my Notion journal, I just I just made it in Notion um, from scratch, I guess, using their, uh, their tools. Um, I'll link it down below. There's a video. I, I'll show you how to, how to make a Notion journal. This one is from David Svensson03. Uh, how how to do valid markups when you don't have a trading plan. Uh, if you don't have a trading plan, hopefully you at least have a model that you're looking for. So understanding what timeframes might give you a reaction and then going to the lower time frame or whatever your entry time frame is and then finding that model. So what I typically recommend is just at least have an idea of where you'll get reactions from supply and demand zones. Um, you need to have the foundation of structure from there. Just make sure you have at least a trading model so that way you can say, I'm going to put enough data into this trading model to see whether or not I can catch something, um, as often enough as I need to, and then just go from there. But I mean, you should probably build a trading plan around that model. So that way you have, um, a good idea of what you want to do from a day-to-day -day basis and not like kind of just do guesswork. This one is from Umar Farouk. Can I make a hundred RR off a 50 K account in a month? Yes. I mean, I, you can, but, um, the yeah, RR is kind of whatever you want to, you want a percentage, right? You want a percentage earned. You can make a hundred RR off of like a pile of shit and some glitter. Like if someone's going to buy it, as long as there's minimal risk on it, that's a hundred RR, right? Depends on what you put in. Um, just, you know, as long as your risk is appropriate and you are not just trying to overtrade, um, yeah, hundred R is a subjective thing. I would worry more about percentage. You could risk 0.1 lot and make hundred R. It's not going to make you any money, but you can tell people you made hundred R. I don't know. This one is from Kookie94. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Do you use any trading assistance? 
Uh, no, I have a magic keys, uh, which. Boom. So I use this guy. Uh, try this. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but it has um, automated trading um, software that I connect to my MT4, and then it's just a physical button. Um, you can open your trades, it calculates your risk for you, and then you just kind of drag lines to see, you know, where would my stop loss be? And then depending on what risk profile you use, it will adjust that lot size for you to make sure that your risk isn't, you're not over risking. And then it has auto break even, which is awesome because I can walk away. I can drag my auto break even line to whatever substructure high or low or supplier demand zone that I want. And when price hits it, it'll just move my stop loss to my entry plus however many pips i tell it to to cover commissions um so yeah this is this is magic keys i highly recommend it i love it i know some people use uh position 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 size calculator and some other one i, I can't remember but this one is from lucia gonclaves 8819 do you think smc will end this one's funny because most people don't understand that the original SMC concept is uh, something just based on premium discount. It wasn't all this stuff. All this stuff has evolved from SMC. Um, we, we consider it now SMC or some people consider it SMC. But in its original days, smart money concepts was just the idea that smart money buys in a discount. Smart money sells in a premium where dumb money buys in a premium so buying at a high or selling in a discount selling at the low that was the whole theory you would use uh, like a gan tool or a fib box to mark your eqs and most people would just trade it from like a weekly candle they would look at the eq of a weekly candle watch for price to come into the eq if they want to short it wait for price to get into premium and then price would drop and yeah etc so whatever is happening now is more so a an evolution of the wyckoff theory plus supply and demand plus smart money concepts so to answer your question do you think smart money will end technically it's already ended because it's, it's something new um most people don't knew that know that and i don't know why um i think it's because smc has become more of a like a trend or like a fad recently and yeah pe people just fail to realize that this one is from 12 med 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 sezir med sezir med med ah, i'm sorry uh i'm in phantom i do not understand how to trade new york or london opening those are just session times that have high volatility all, all you're doing is using your confluences to just take advantage of that volatility but that's all it is there's um you're not necessarily trading london or New York open as a confluence. Does that make sense? It's just good session timing. Like that, you want to be in the market around that. Um, this one's from Callan Easy. Uh, is a consistent 20% a month achievable in one to two years of trading at Phantom or with the Phantom strategy? Yeah, definitely. 20% a month is typically like th this is the way I see it, right? Even if you just took four trades and you just took 5R on each of those at 5%. That's 20%, right? You could take one trade, really good trade. Make sure that you put the appropriate risk on and that you manage it well, you're not over managing it. You can easily make five, 10% in those trades. 20% is a good thing to aim for, but yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. I mean, you're always gonna have months. I mean, an equity curve is typically something that looks like the markets. It ebbs and flows, you have ups and downs. Some months you do very well. You might have a 60% return. Some months, maybe you didn't do so well. You have a 10 month or a 10% return. Sometimes you're negative. And then the next month after that, you're up again, another 20%. It's not always going to be consistent in the fact that you make X amount of percentage per month, but it should be consistent in the fact that over a long period of time, quarter to quarter, year to year, you're green, right? That's, that's what you're looking for. Uh, this one is from Ag4BA. Please, what makes you decide if you'll pick a flip or extreme on the lower time frame? Um, liquidity, basically. Yeah, 11MH asks, how to get comfortable with losses and try to move on? I assume that means move on. There was a tweet that I put out the other week that I think fits this very well. It's essentially the concept of 
I'm just accustomed to the pain, meaning I take losses and it's been such a long journey and I have experience that it just doesn't affect me as much as it would a new trader or somebody who's just learning or trying a new strategy, something like that. Yeah, here, losses. It's not that I don't feel my losses. It's more that I have a familiarity with the pain that allows me to experience it in a way that doesn't sway my confidence. That's kind of how you're, you're gonna look at it. You, you need to build experience and you'll just, you'll get used to it more or less. It won't, it won't bug you so much. This one is from I am Z Zidane Henri. Whoa, you're like the best player in the world. All right, look, phantom trading strategy, profitable using New York session only? I only trade in New York, yes. Very much so. I'm pretty sure Alex Tricky only trades in New York. Um, Brad Wise only trades in New York. There's a lot of people that only trade in New York that do very well. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. This one is from UI. Where are you from? What was your first thought when you first heard about trading? Now, I think some people know this. My father was a day trader. Um, so when I was growing up, I always heard of it. Um, so I, I can't remember my first thought because it, it was so long ago. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's always just been a thing, I guess. All right. This one's from jet FX official again. Uh, please talk about over trading and how to tame it. All right. So this issue plagues so many people. Like I can't even like, I think a lot of people maybe don't speak up if they are over trading, but I imagine a lot of people have this problem. I had this problem. Some of the students definitely do. Overtrading is one of those things that one can be fixed with experience to an extent, right? A lot of it is habitual. A lot of it has to do with you and how you reply to different emotional states, how you react to the markets after you've taken a loss or a win, right? There's a lot of times where people will take a win and they'll give it all back and then lose some or just give a lot of it back or they'll just keep taking loss after loss after loss and just kind of revenge trade the market. A lot of times it has to do with like being on the wrong side of the market. So having confidence in your strategy is definitely one way to do it. If you're an impulsive person and it's more of a, um, what's the right way to say this? More of like an internal conflict, like it is your personality, then what I recommend is just getting away from your charts. If you're in a trade, set your alerts, make sure you have a stop loss. If you want to have a take profit, but just walk away. Don't sit in front of the charts. A lot of times people over trade because they just are constantly staring at a one minute chart or for people who trade the second time frame, five second charts. Like it's just not a good idea. You can also just, if you need to be at your desk because you work from home or whatever it is, just get out of the lower time frame, stay in the higher time frame or the mid time frame look for specific POIs and just wait for price to get there. Um, I think out of sight, out of mind is generally the better way to go with this, especially if you're in a trade because over trading is one thing, but over management is a whole other thing that you have to, that you have to tackle. Um, so getting away from your charts when you're in a trade or, or potentially looking for a trade or if the market's not quite there, if it's not ready to set up, just, just don't be there. Uh, what is a good broker for us since we can't trade IC markets? We don't have, we don't have a lot of options. Um, the best thing that you can do is just go with Awanda or forex.com. Just make sure it's a regulated broker. A lot of these brokers that we have in the U S that you'll see on ads and whatever else, they're not regulated. They're like off on some off, uh, like St. Vincent, the Grenadines and they offer decent trading conditions but I would never put like proper capital in here. Like if you had like large capital, you wouldn't want to put it in an unregulated broker. They could get, I don't know, they could just disappear and there's, there's no repercussion, right? Not saying that they would, obviously some of these have been around for a long time, but generally speaking, like you could have issues with payouts, you could have issues with them just running off with your money and you will have no way to go after them. A regulated broker, is better but the trading conditions are generally not that good 
um, they're just not that good. But if you trade a high enough volume, they'll give you a pro account and you can get better trading conditions, lower spreads, lower commissions, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I use it one though, so. This question is from coach Justin underscore fit. What was your very first trade ever? And how did it go? It was a crypto trade and I think I bought um, Ethereum and it mooned like for a hot second and I didn't close the trade. I just thought it would keep going and eventually came back and just like went into red and I didn't have a stop loss. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I don't know if this is my first trade, but it's definitely one that I remember because um, I was, I was pretty, pretty decently in profit. And then I sat on the trade for three days in the red like heavy red and then eventually it came back up and then i close it for like basically break even so yeah okay cool so this is going to be the business section of it so some off trading topic stuff like you know other investments and that kind of stuff this one's from uh jay charb what camera setup are you using for youtube insane quality thanks uh i am using a sony a6400 with a sigma 16 millimeter lens and a sure mv7 microphone um just it's not super expensive it's i would consider it very affordable and um yeah the quality is just really good so there it is i'll probably upgrade down the road if if you know youtube takes off and that kind of stuff but that's what i'm using this question is from danny forex if money didn't matter would you still trade as a job or how would you rather spend your time my dream project is to build an indoor sports complex with soccer, basketball, tennis, running track along the top, gym, concession stand, all this stuff. When I was a kid, um, my coach built his own indoor training facility for soccer and it was smaller, but it had indoor soccer. And where I'm from in upstate New York, it's always snowing. It was like six months out of the year. It was just cold or it was rainy. It was just not good conditions to play outside. And I, I've played soccer all my life. And I, every single night I was there, like every single night. What other career fields have you done aside from training? Um, the majority of my background is IT. I got my degree, my undergrad degree in business. And then I went for my master's in marketing. While I was getting my degree, I worked at Apple in in uh, washington dc and from there i got another it job working as kind of like a tech support person and then from there i went into a systems engineer position and then from there i was a senior systems engineer and then yeah and then i started my own it company after that uh this is from pip sniper 2021 do you have any other businesses going on uh yes i've got a project that i'm working on right now with my business partners that uh, we can't i can't really talk about um, but it's, Ooh, I could, probably can't even say that. Cut that, cut that, cut that. Um, me and my wife are working on something and then I, yeah, I'm starting to build, um, a digital asset pack just because it's proper passive income. Uh, this one is from Trent based 11. Do you want to start a vlog someday? No. Alex, my con, my, my Kenya. a business to get into alongside trading or to work towards once successful with trading. Everyone says real estate, agreed. Just get into real estate as much as you can. Um, one of the biggest things I would say is just make sure whatever it is, like you have like some level of passion for it. Obviously making money is one of the primary factors a lot of this stuff. If you don't really care about what you're doing, um, it, it'll show and, and, and it will kind of make the stress levels a little bit higher. So if, if you can, if you have something that is valuable to people and people want it, there's demand for it, and you're passionate about it, sell it. Don't work for free. All right, so this one is from Nine Antagonist Six. Which books do you think are better for trading, psychology or business books? It depends on what you consider psychology related books. If it's self help, self, what? Self help, if it's self help, um, I think that's all bullshit, to be honest. Um, if you didn't know this, self-help industry is a massive industry, multi, multi-billion dollar industry. And the, the biggest problem with it, and I'll be brief on it because I don't want to go in, down this rabbit hole, is that nine out of 10 times, they're just selling you this motivation and it's a fleeting motivation. 
and all it does is just cycle you into purchasing more self-help stuff so buying a new book joining a seminar a webinar and all that's going to happen is that you're going to wake up one day with a crushing realization that you are still who you are when you first started this journey that's just brass tacks um some people have changed for the better but for the majority of people uh they feel that motivation they buy something they read the book they feel good but they don't actually go and and do what they're supposed to do they just wake up one day and realize that nothing's happening nothing's changing so for me um books around habits and productivity are good uh james clear has a book atomic habits is pretty much the only book i ever recommend to people um not that it's the only good book it's just it's the only one that's had like a massive positive impact on my life um building habits around small actionable uh, goals or habits uh, from a daily basis building up to a much larger um life-changing habit so like one percent incremental change every day um c dub trades asks does it bother you i think bother you does it bother you that traders don't really add to society since we just make money i don't know what you're talking about um the majority of the traders that i know that actually make money uh are very charitable people um kevin and brad they donate and they help with their local communities and their schools um another trader that i know fx he does quite a bit for his hometown and his um, people in India, his family and that kind of stuff. Uh, I know that he donates a certain percentage every single year of his earnings to various charities and, um, yeah, donates tech and that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, most people that I know are not complete assholes. They do very charitable things with the money they earn. Um, if you're around traders who actually can actually make money and, and don't do charitable things, uh, I mean, I don't want to judge them, but I would personally judge their character. So I do want to judge them. Be better if you're one of those people. I, I would hope that's not. I, I would hope that's not the case. Around, not to mention it's a tax break. Can you recommend any YouTube channels you consume about trading or digital business? Uh, there are no YouTube channels at all that I recommend for trading. Um, most of these guys, yeah, I, I don't want to talk shit. So, but digital business stuff definitely. Olier, he's probably my favorite. YouTuber. He talks a lot about digital design. He talks a lot about his uh, various income streams, both, both passive and semi-passive. Um, and again, I'll link those below. Both. Okay. These are the personal questions. Um, some of them are me, whatever. We'll just go into it. We'll see what happens. Um, what do you listen to when you're trading? Um, mostly lo-fi, jazz, classical, anything that doesn't have lyrics. Oh, Spotify playlist down below i finally put one together for you guys melody trader melody trader what is your first profession selling sunrooms in upstate new york and gutter stoppers so leaves want to go and get stuck in the gutters they never actually worked so whatever uh luke skies asks what's your favorite takeout food um i guess barbecue i'm in texas patrice bc bishop uh, what's your ultimate goal i don't think i have an ultimate goal i have various goals that i work towards and then once i achieve them i tend to have new ones um, but right now ultimate goal I, I can't really say that i i have an ultimate goal um sandeep asks how old are you i think i'm 34 i don't remember sometimes something about having two kids uh benjamin cwe asks what were your hobbies before being super busy with kids and phantom etc uh i've played soccer since i was five I played uh, in high school. I played on competitive teams and leagues, and I played in college. I walked on to this uh, to my team in upstate New York. I'll show you my picture here. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, nothing crazy. I was a bench warmer, but I pride myself on being able to walk on and, and beat some people out in the tryouts that were um, that were scouted. So happy about that. Eight nine nine oh one. Would you ever move to another country? Definitely. I don't know where, maybe Canada to be next to Brad. I don't know. Zane from WS. What are your other passions outside of trading? Uh, photography, videography. Yeah, I mean, those are my passions, I guess. Soccer's huge. I, I coach my kids soccer team, U6 girls, just absolutely destroying everybody else. So that's cool. Uh, Zane from WS asks again, are you into movies or series? No, not really. I think movies are typically a waste of time. Like I have a, I want to watch movies. I always think about them. I think it would be a good idea. But then when I'm actually sitting there watching the movie, 
I feel like I'm not doing anything I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like I should be productive. I should be doing something else. So it's hard to focus. Um, series, there's a couple series, I guess, that I watch every now and again. Um, like recently, The Last Kingdom. I love, I like that show. It's a, it's a good show. Um, outside of that, I, I watch anime. Like I, like, yeah. What do you currently drive? And what goal car do you have in mind? Well, I don't drive anything crazy. I'd, well, I mean, maybe it is, but uh, we, have, we just have a family car because uh, we have two kids under six and they're messy as shit. They will spill stuff, get crumbs everywhere, everything sticky that they touch. So there's no way in hell that we're going to put these kids in like a super expensive car or anything like that. Um, but we just have an Infinity X, XC60. Yeah, that's a 2022. Uh, Kasia Z asks, where did you meet your wife? At work. Uh, we both worked for Apple. Uh, she worked there before me. I came in and she trained me. Yeah, so there you go. Danny Forex asks, favorite film? Shaun of the Dead. I, I watched Shaun of the Dead like a thousand times in college. It's one of the movie, the only movies I ever quote. I'm not a big movie quoter person, but like Shaun of the Dead is probably one of my favorite. I love Simon Pegg. Um, what are your favorite hobbies besides trading? Uh, probably playing video games. I feel like I missed this one before. Uh, I don't play them as much as I would like to anymore, but typically it's apex legends i used to be a huge world of warcraft nerd, like huge world of warcraft if there's any druids out there what's up uh hallelunalu asks what do you do when you're in a bad mood <clears throat> this is a tough one um i i have a very bad way of expressing my emotions in the sense that i don't um at all so I can be hard to read. So when I'm in a bad mood, it's it's typically a very fleeting thing. It doesn't really happen often. Um, but usually the thing that kind of, I guess, nips that in the bud is just doing something that takes my mind off of whatever it may be. Um, you know, if it's trading related stuff, just walk away from the charts. You know, I, I very rarely put myself in a situation where I'm upset with my trading to the point where it's like, um, you know, ruining my day or anything like that because I have a very specific loss limit and percentage limit that I very rarely over, um, kind of overshoot. So, um, yeah, if you're in a bad mood, it's probably better just to find something else to do that puts you in a good mood, like out of sight, out of mind. It's, yeah, artisty asks, How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Uh, tell your story. So, um, most of my story is kind of out here throughout these other questions so i'm just going to go into maybe how or why i call myself blackwatch fx um so brian well first thing is first brian's like insanely boring it's the most boring name i've ever seen in my life so blackwatch fx is cool it fits the vibe it's whatever um when i was in high school i played on this soccer team my club team that had a tournament in toronto for the most part we thought we were kind of hot shit and we did pretty well most times but when we play this team they just absolutely destroyed us they were on a completely different level um so and their name was blackwatch fc and i'll never forget they scored some insane goals there's one goal where like the right winger just broke free from pretty much all our defenders got into the the right side of the box crossed it to the top corner of the left left side of the box and this kid came out of nowhere and just freaking, he just like got up, went completely horizontal and just scissor kicked it on like the top upper 90 corner. And it was just like, what the hell is happening? Um, so the name Blackwatch FC, one, it's cool as shit. And two, it just reminds me that like, there's always going to be somebody that's much better than you, or at least just better than you. So, you know, just don't have an ego. Don't be an asshole and, and that kind of stuff. Um, which I feel like in this industry, like, the, the amount of ego these people have is it's unsettling honestly I, it's kind of crazy pip sniper 2021 asks any sports soccer i played tennis in in high school as well i didn't it was just high school tennis but we did pretty well we we went to states like two years in a row that kind of stuff me and my doubles partner uh this is from jordy yard jordy yard watching decent tv shows recently yes what have i been watching um last kingdom I'm Uhtred, son of Uhtred. Last Kingdom's awesome. Uh, this is from Gregory T. Since your father, uh, since you are a father, does it change the way you trade and work? Yes, definitely. My kids don't go to school every day of the week. One of them 
does, but the other one doesn't. So there's a lot of um, disruption, if you will. So for me, I wake up early. I try to wake up before everybody wakes up. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. Uh, they typically get up around like 6.30 for school. So I work from 5 to 6.30 and then get them out for school. And then I work from until about noon or so. And then um, between trading, whatever. And then I handle like whatever I have to do for Phantom and other projects between like two and like but to, by the time we have to go pick up my kids from school so yeah it's just everything's revolved around them I, I work around that schedule because you know you, you just yeah there's no other way this is from Lorenzo Mangiano have you ever been to Rome Italy no but I would love to that'd be cool James Morfitt uh, Windows or Mac OS definitely both because again I worked for Apple for about five years and I worked in IT for about 10, 12, 13, 14 years, something like that. So, and I've worked in both spectrums. I, li I like them both for what they are like. Mac, my trading is a PC. Yeah, definitely both, definitely both. For creative stuff, definitely Mac. For trading, gaming, PC. This is from uh, Philippe Hud. Heard you like metal. What's your favorite subgenre or band? So probably my favorite band from like college days and stuff is this band called he is legend uh, they're from north carolina just awesome band um outside of that um yeah i listen i grew up listening to stuff like insomnium um yeah maybe i'll share a metal playlist you guys want a metal playlist if you want a metal playlist just let me know but i um a lot of like metalcore and like melodic death metal stuff like that stuff something that has a melody i don't like just just guttural noises <laughs> Um, but something has a melody and something that has like good clean instrumentals because again I like classical so something that fits into that into that kind of thing. Uh, this is from Young Goblin Sleep Hacks. Uh, I have no sleep hacks. I, if you look at my uh, sleep chart for how much sleep I get, it's very bad and apparently I should get more. Last night I got four hours and 58 minutes of sleep. That's not good. Let's see what my monthly average is. My average time in bed is five hours and 18 minutes. My average time of sleep is five hours and 48 minutes. I've got more time of sleep than I'm actually in bed. So that's your sleep hack. Figure out how to do that and you're good. Thomas VBM asks, do you think it's bad to go for trading without having some type of income in your mid twenties? Do you have savings at least? Like you need to have some kind of cushion. If you're living under your parents' house, I typically would recommend getting a job, being able to f support yourself financially, and then getting into trading. It could take a few years, but um, the last thing you wanna do is try to trade and not make any money while living in your parents' house with like extra eyes and just stress and just that kind of like constant pressure. It, it don't, don't do that. If, if you're not, if you're living on your own and you have money, then obviously yeah go for it but generally speaking like you probably want some sort of income stream to cover you if, if something goes goes wrong um dun -dun 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 -dun. if someone made a movie about your life what would it be titled that boring monotone guy starts a youtube channel that's my guess naf i feel like this name is naf king uh, hey man, I love your work. In the future, can you share how your day is structured on YouTube? Um, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Um, a lot of it has to do with my kids, so I'm, I'm never gonna share anything that on here, but I will see if I can make it work. Uh, Hustle G, favorite book and what you're reading currently. Um, I'm not reading anything for myself. I read a lot of stuff for my kids. We just read The Secret Garden. <laughs> I'm reading Charlotte's Web, I don't know. Uh, Gator36, where's your family from? Um, my mom's from Southeast Asia, Cambodia, and my dad, his family is from um, Quebec actually, but generally speaking, upstate New York, South Canada. This one is from JHCM10, a desk office tour setup. It's in the works, it's coming. This one is from Brian Can't Wake Up. Well, this is weird because my name is Brian, so it feels weird. Uh, what do you think of Asian countries? <laughs> um, I'm for them. <laughs> uh, this one is from NL. If I get funded, will I be handsome like you? Um, Kurt Robert Robertson FX asks, how good is your soccer team? They're amazing. 
they're six years old and they destroy everybody else on the field. Uh, this is from Doom, Doomy Sane, LOL. I want a Spotify playlist. Link below. The Tan Peter Pan asks, uh, you, what is your most significant daily habit or action? Waking up early, for sure. I get a lot done in the morning. Pedro Garcia official asks, what is your routine before day trading? There isn't much of one, not gonna lie. Uh, I personally think meditating is bullshit. I think it's along lines of third eye crap and self-help. I don't buy into it. What I do is just I wake up, I make sure that my eyes adjust to light appropriately so I don't do any damage, more damage, my eyes are miserable. And then, um, yeah, I just, I just analyze the market, set my alerts, and then I go get the kids ready for school. That's it. How do you manage your time? Asks Adam. One trades. Um, do you use an app or a schedule? So I just break my days up. So I will, uh, maybe I'll do a video on this. It's just, um, I organize my week, right? So it's not day by day. It's more or less week by week. And then I use the Pomodoro technique, which I've gone over before, the Pomodoro technique. I use it to track my time while I'm working on certain tasks. Uh, and then for the tasks, I give myself three main tasks every single day. So that way I can make sure that I'm progressing with the stuff that I have to work on. And then from there, I just, I go from week to week and each day is segmented. So that way on Mondays, I'll work on X. Tuesdays, I'll work on Y. Wednesdays, I'll work on this. Thursday, I'll work on this. Fridays is typically a flex day. That, that's the general idea. Chart Wizard asks how to gain mental clarity to trade. Definitely going to be something along the lines of having a solid plan, a solid strategy, and just overall good experience. Psychology and motivation. Mind sharing how to keep motivated. Um, diversify. Don't do the same thing all day long, every single day. Don't sit there and study how to trade for like eight hours a day, every single day until you're like burnt out. It doesn't really work. If you wanna stay motivated, you need to one, make sure you're using your time appropriately. And then two, reward yourself for that time, right? And it could be anything. It could be a few hours of downtime. It could be going to get something that you like to eat or just hanging out with your friends or whatever, right? Just take your breaks. That's the most important thing in the world. Uh, your best book recommendation, uh, Eric SMC asks your book recommendation, um, Atomic Habits, easily, yeah. Now this is the fun stuff. Smaj Lee 6 asks, would you rather find a tarantula in your toilet and not know about it or wake up with it on your face? Uh, definitely in the toilet, 100%. 100%. Uh, we have a lot of those here in Texas. So. Another one, you're stuck in the middle. Your right path is to step on kitties and your left is to step on puppies. Which path do you go? My vertical leap is insane. I'll just jump over there. Uh, here's another one. You have to go outside completely nude, but you can see through other people through through other people's clothes. Take it or leave it. Leave it. Hard pass. Would you rather swim with orcas or ride deadly polar bear? Deadly polar bear. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Kiss, Mary, kill. Dumble, Dumbledore, Snape, or McGonagall? Uh, Dumbledore. Mary for sure. McGonagall. Kiss, Snape, kill. Easy. How can you talk in slower tone? I mean, is this your natural way? or just build it from trading market like my voice this is just this is just my voice jean van arde bro how does it feel to be famous give me a follow i'm not famous um have you ever pissed the bed um sure definitely i remember one time it was definitely like it's too old to be doing it but like too young for it to be a problem and I remember very vividly because I, I was dreaming that I was peeing and then I woke up and I was peeing. I was like probably like 12, I don't know. Uh, how do I stop staining my pants? <laughs> Where's fucking underwear, what the hell? Um, all right, what tool do you use to draw your jawline? A fib? Uh, no, it's a, it's a golden ratio. Just... All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the Q and A portion of this video uh, your exits are this way and this way this way that way if you want to and you enjoy the video hit the like button because it helps apparently the algorithm or something something about the algorithm I don't know. 
and then comment if you like fish sticks oh uh, no actually if you don't like fish sticks so i feel like most of you guys don't like fish sticks comment below if you don't like fish sticks Fuck fish sticks do you like a dick a day jesus christ red why are you so handy Some of my nerds. You wanna be my lover? Dude, it's so hot in here. Hey, Black Watch. Hey, Black Watch. Where you get your colors from? There's a ring around the half knots. They laugh while you dance like a mascot. Ashes, ashes. We all fall down. They consider you a